Heart disease is a serious problem for women. Cardiovascular de disease in general, including heart attacks, stroke, other forms of vascular disease, kill more women than all forms of cancer combined. So many people don't realize how serious cardiovascular disease is, and it's understandable because they see the processes of cancer and how people you know, struggle as they go through cancer, and it feels so much more scary and makes them so much more fearful. And in many cases, heart disease is pretty silent. And so you don't necessarily see someone going through a process in which their blood pressure is high or their diabetes is getting worse or their cholesterol is building up, which is why it's such a silent killer and many people don't recognize it as a risk. Let's talk about prevention and let's start with diet. What is a heart healthy diet, Dr. O? A heart healthy diet includes a number of things, but largely fresh things like fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, fewer processed foods. So that's a you know that's a challenge for a lot of people because we live in a society where we're, we're rushed, we're moving around, you know, lightning speed all the time. Um, and it's easy to kind of grab the things that are processed, but those are the things that really do harm us. And so there's some really good tools that people can use to think about what is a healthy meal and what is a combination of things that I could have on my plate. The American Heart Association has the heart check foods, so those check marks, you can see them in foods in the grocery stores and even some places where you're dining out. But there will also be things that you can use, like the CDC's My Plate tool that you can use to see how much of a balance should you have between those fresh foods, those non-processed foods. People tend to think that, okay, I've got to get it like kind of straight from the farm to my table and that's the only way that it's fresh, but those can be frozen, they can be canned or dried. They all count. So adding more color to your meals and snacks is certainly possible and not everything has to be right out of the produce section. And I would also just mention that many people think that heart healthy food is boring food. And you might be surprised at how much food is actually really good for your heart if you're open to trying it. What role does alcohol play in heart disease? The real worry with alcohol is excessive alcohol use over time. And that can contribute to high blood pressure, diabetes, to heart disease, to stroke. And so they tend to recommend that women drink less than one alcoholic beverage per day. And that's considered like 12 ounces of beer, four ounces of wine. It's not to say that you should not consume alcohol at all, but anything above those numbers is probably not good for your health. Another risk factor is stress. Can you explain the connection between stress and heart disease? Stress and feeling un a lot of pressure and inability to kind of relax and to center um, contributes to poor healthy behaviors. So you might be really stressed and so you decide I need to take a puff of a cigarette and that's a behavior that contributes to heart disease. It might lead you to overeating, might lead you to saying, I don't really want to do that much. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be very physically active. I'm going to sit down and um, kind of be sedentary or an unhealthy diet, uh, or maybe not taking medications as prescribed. So the, the combination of feeling the stress, but then some of the habits that emerge from feeling that stress can contribute to this kind of cycle of potential risk for, for heart disease. Um, but also uh, it's, it is important, we, we know that raising levels of cortisol constantly from feeling that stress over time start to do damage to the vessels and to the heart itself. What about high blood pressure, Dr. O? How often should you get that checked? Getting your blood pressure checked regularly is really important. High blood pressure is definitely a risk factor and probably one of the most challenging risk factors for heart disease and cardiovascular disease in general, because it is so silent. It's very hard to know that your blood pressure is high. And people tend to feel, to say things like, I've had patients tell me, oh, I feel like my blood pressure is so high. And, and while that's a subjective thought, that's likely not necessarily something you can always feel. Now, if you're at the point where you are symptomatic from that high blood pressure, like with blurred vision or, or chest pain or difficulty breathing, uh, then, it, that, then that's at a point where it's, it's really bad. You can get your blood pressure checked and at least know your numbers in so many places. Increasingly, you're seeing machines and blood pressure equipment in pharmacies. Pharmacists are able to check your blood pressure right there. And then some people are doing it while they're waiting for things in the, in the grocery store. So there's not a whole lot of burden that needs to go into getting a blood pressure reading. Just making sure that you have a plan to follow up when you get the numbers so you know what to do with them is important. Generally speaking, there are two numbers. So there's the systolic number that's at the top and then the diastolic number that's at the bottom. We like that top number number to be less than 130, which is ideal, and the bottom number to be less than 80. Getting checked regularly for blood pressure is important. It doesn't need to be every single day, but certainly doing it at least a few times uh, every year, maybe once a quarter, and knowing what those numbers are is really important. What about the role of cholesterol? Getting your cholesterol checked is important, but there's good cholesterol, there's bad cholesterol. How often should you get it checked and what ideally should those numbers be? 
having cholesterol is, is important for our bodies. We need it for cellular development. We need it for vitamins and we need it for other hormones. But too much of cholesterol, just like, you know, kind of with the blood pressure can really be a problem. So the way we think about it is if you have too much of the cholesterol, that's the bad type, it starts to clog the arteries that take blood throughout the body, but also the arteries that directly feed the heart. And that's where cholesterol actually becomes a problem. The good thing about cholesterol is that there's a lot that you can do. A healthy diet with those fresh foods that we talked about, limiting processed foods and fast foods, it's good for cholesterol. Also uh, exercise and habits that can get you out of a sedentary kind of lifestyle are really good for the cholesterol. Reducing things like tobacco consumption is also really good for your cholesterol. So those are things that many times are recommended first before actually starting on medications. Then usually medications are recommended after those things don't, don't are not successful. Are there particular risks women of color have when it comes to heart disease? Yeah, so women of color in particular have higher uh, rates of heart disease and tend to have more sudden onset of heart disease at younger ages. But also higher levels of toxic stress have been well associated for people that are racial and ethnic minorities, but also in lower socioeconomic uh, neighborhoods and zip codes that are more challenged by crime or low education or low economic mobility. So those things, you know, to the cortisol point we were talking about earlier, increase these kind of lifelong levels of cortisol. Then you have these other risk factors from potentially um, having challenges during pregnancies. And those things lead to higher risk of heart disease for black women in particular. What are some of the signs that you might have heart disease that could possibly lead to a heart attack? It's not always easy to tell that you're developing heart disease, but there are some indicators that you could look at that could suggest that that's happening. So one is your blood pressure. If your blood pressure is is not controlled and it remains high and elevated, other symptoms like your cholesterol numbers, blurry vision or intermittent chest pain, those could be signs that you're developing heart disease. So worth getting checked out it's so hard to know that your arteries are getting clogged. So that's why prevention is so important. Getting at least two and a half hours of moderate exercise in a, in a week is, is, a, is a good start. People are sometimes surprised at some of the things that you can do. Low intensity walking, biking, swimming, gardening, trying to do things like maybe taking the stairs instead of the elevator if you're physically able to do so. Um, parking a little further from the entrance of a store if you're going to a store or a bank or a post office. Those are all good ways to get exercise. It's so important to just be really in tune with your body and know when things are wrong. When, when, when patients tell me that something is wrong, I'm, I'm not sure what it is. Even if they don't look to me like something particular is going on, I, have to, I tend to believe them because if they're living in their body every day and they know that there is a difference right now, that might be an indicator. So I would say just really know your body and, and trust yourself when you feel like something is different.